Well, welcome to the Church Office Podcast. My name's Gavin Smith, and if you're joining us on video, then here's a little wave. I'm excited to have Nigel Ring join us. I've never actually heard the word wicked and accountant <laughs> put in the same sentence. Well, good morning and welcome to the Church Office Podcast. My name is Gavin Smith, and uh, we've got a special guest today. Joe Roach from Cambridge is with us. We've met at a UCAN conference, um, and I thought, everyone our listeners need to hear joe so uh, joe welcome to the podcast thank you welcome <laughs> nice to see you a bubbly character who who loves her job uh, is passionate about people i mean this is everything i've just picked up at the conference i thought right i need to get her on the podcast because she is going to be be outstanding so uh, thank you so much for coming <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I mean, we were just joking earlier. Uh, I was saying it took me ages to track her down because you've you've kind of changed your hairstyle, haven't you, in the last year? And on the UCAN, you can put a picture up of yourself on the network. And I thought, well, I know the face, but the hair's really long. And so, you know, to see you on camera today, I'm like, okay, this is definitely the right person. But yeah, quite a change. Yeah, that was that was. I had the post lockdown haircut. Mine was long before lockdown, and then had it cut afterwards. So, but I quite like that old picture, so I haven't changed it. <laughs> but it does confuse people at work as well. <laughs> so, Joe, tell us a bit about your your church and your role. What are you, what are you up to? I'm at St Andrews Histon, um, and I'm the church administrator or ch church office manager, I think technically. Um, we've combined. We have two churches, St Andrews Histon and St, St Andrews Impington, that we also look after, um, and also a big centre. So we have um, lots of bookings for a hall, for halls in the centre and rooms, but also have a cafe um, that runs in the centre that is managed by the church. Um, so, yeah. Brilliant. And how long have you been in post? How long have you been there? Oh, in my current post, like, you're making me think now. Um, <laughs> Do the maths. Yeah, quick, quick, quick maths. Um, six years, I think, since we opened the centre, but yeah. in the current post, um, 18 months less than that. So four and a half. Yeah. Since long enough, something like that. Yeah. And you're probably a typical church administrator because our roles seem to grow and develop over time. How Tell us, how did you get involved in this? Because you, you obviously, you came from a teaching background, didn't you? I did, that's right. Um, I'd had children, I wasn't teaching, I was doing other things myself in the community. And um, I was um, asked to be part of the cafe committee, setting yeah. up the new cafe and the new centre because we'd just been developed. Um, and... I said, said to a friend, I said, I want to be involved in more of it than just the cafe. She said, that's okay, you will be. Um, and then after I'd um, been involved in that, somebody came up to me, two different people, they were advertising for, for somebody to manage voluntarily the centre. Yeah. And I said, kept ignoring this message. I've got too much else going on and four young children. And two people yeah. the same day, within about half an hour, each other said to me, that's you. Yeah, yeah. And they really felt a call on me. But yeah. two of both independently said it within half an hour. Yeah, it just confirmed it, yeah. Yeah, and I did that step at that point then to being the manager at the centre. At that point, the church office was its own busy entity okay. um, and took that on. And But then later on, the office manager was stepping down and I said, we need to merge these two roles. There's too much overlap and too much yeah. negotiating, not negotiating, but too much reference between us. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, okay, that's what we need to do. And somebody else had had the same thought at the same time, funnily enough. <laughs> and so, yeah, I, I became the overall manager of the two churches and the centre. Oh, brilliant. It's brilliant. I mean, you've been there six years and, and I'm sure making a huge difference. Um, and cafes seem to be, you know, just kind of really busy at the minute. Lots of churches are either starting one or uh, regenerating them, you know, getting them going. They're a real place where you can engage with community and and. And um, I don't know what what's your your experience being coming back from COVID with a cafe is that a couple people yeah. coming in chatting and getting lots more of people coming in and it's developing. Um, what is really interesting is um, we've got a lot of cafes have opened up in the centres in the centre in the community since we opened ours. We're only a small village. Yeah, we've really become a, a cafe central. So people come out of Cambridge to the different cafes. Okay. People wondered whether we, it was too much competition, but we're a very different entity to the other cafes. Yeah be very much a pastoral as well yeah. and offer low prices a lot of older people come in for regular deal meal deals and things like that so yeah. I think and we have a lot of people that come in every day yeah. um certain certain people are very regular it's yeah. it's really interesting yeah it's good isn't it it's, it's a great way to engage and I, I I went and did a podcast with the 
Paul Barnell in a, a Baptist church in Cardiff and they they've got a fantastic cafe and they had a huge legacy left to the church and, and they've really plowed it into kind of trying to you know you know be a presence in the community and and they've they put this cafe together and it's it's fantastic so uh, I love that so what does it what does it look like on a day-to-day -day basis for you how many sort of days a week are you work in and what kind of things different things are you juggling and doing I officially work Monday to Friday okay um which is hard because I get worship at the church that I, I work at yeah so I am often involved in conversations on a, a weekend like a lot of us church administrators are but yeah. officially I'm not working yeah. I have joked about making a badge that says I'm here to worship not work <laughs> just remind people um I haven't done that yet <laughs> there might but be I, a market for that actually to sell <laughs> absolutely <laughs> I am getting firmer at telling people though yeah so I was I picked up on the UCAN forum um wonderful site one time to actually sort of not apologize when I say oh I'm sorry I won't remember that yeah. so I, I also say please email me at work so that I remember that I'm not going to apologize for not remembering or whatever yeah. but actually email me on Monday so I'm dealing with it in my work head not in yeah. my worship head yeah absolutely okay. right yeah there is always those challenges isn't there when you work at a church where you you're worshiping and you love it and yeah people remember in that moment oh I need to ask Gavin this and it's Sunday and yeah it does happen doesn't it and um we, we do have to live with those kind of tensions but we want to have those kind of clean boundaries as best we can as well and, and it's also I know sometimes I catch them when I need to because it's help, easier to have a conversation in person I know a lot of them are doing their roles as a volunteer yeah so it's trying to get the balance isn't it yeah but, yeah no, it absolutely is yeah it absolutely is so you're you're fully back and church kind of ministries are all back to operating where they were before yeah you... we're fully back i would say we're not operating quite as we were before because i think like a lot of people we've trimmed some branches of the vine and yeah. starting new ones so yeah. um it's not fully operational in the same way maybe but things are back to what we expect now and expanding from this yeah, yeah. What, are, what are some of the things that you've you've trimmed back on kind of ministry wise is that mainly to do with volunteers in different different ministries or projects we've lost lots of volunteers and things so, but some things have changed we've re currently we've reduced the services were reduced and we haven't gone fully back up okay um for different reasons yeah. um we haven't gone back to pew sheets okay yeah we've, we've done a lot more by email and things and but obviously not everyone has email, so it's trying to get the balance. Yeah. Um, which is obviously always a difficult thing. But then other new ministries started. We were leaf sending letters to people during lockdowns, particularly those that were isolated and couldn't do ah, work with emails and things. And those have continued. I love that. Um, yeah. It's really interesting, the things that have happened and things that haven't happened. Yeah. So who, who takes the initiative in sort of writing to people? And is that... They get sent the sermon each week. Oh, right. Um, okay. Now we add a bit the office add in a bit at the beginning or the end it used to initially it was the vicar during the first bit of the lockdown but obviously there was so much pressure on him mm. um and others so we often we write a bit at the beginning including any notices that might be relevant to them oh, um great. but also then the yeah the sermon and bits so yeah that is sweet isn't it very personalized thing coming through the door like that that must be lovely to receive yeah and we connected a few people that yeah were not connecting otherwise because they weren't coming to church because they were no longer able to for different reasons so yeah. and we still live stream obviously that's yeah we'd never, we never live stream before and we, we are continuing to live stream so yeah i think it's great yeah lots of churches have kind of gone back and forth haven't they and whether they should or shouldn't and, and lots of conversations i'm having with churches that they are continuing it purely yeah. because they they are reaching those who are most vulnerable or are not able to still come and and I don't know what it's like with you, but we've got a few spikes of COVID and various things. It seems to be uh, around a little bit more. So um, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's nice to be able to have that available for people um, to serve people in the, in the week. Tell me some of the, the new ministries you've got going, because that's exciting. Ooh, what new things are you doing? Think now. <laughs> are you guys doing anything with Ukrainians? That's, that's our news. Oh, program. yeah. So that's a new thing. Yeah, no, good one. Um, I mean, during COVID, I was involved very much in the community and coordinating yeah. helpers and support um, community structures. Those have, in theory, sorted out and now their own, each high yeah. street had coordinated and things, each high street, each street. Um, but yeah, with, co with co Ukrainians, we've now got a team up and running, supporting the hosts and supporting the Ukrainians coming in. We haven't had masses of Ukrainians yet into the village, but they are gradually increasing. But obviously a lot of people that want to help 
So we've hosted um, one event recently in the garden, actually, um, in, in our garden at home, just for the hosts and the families, just to get to know each other yeah, and to make yeah. a connection because they're not finding it easy to just start talking over nothing. So a cup of yeah. tea. Yeah, it's so true. And, I think. and other things that are happening in the Yeah. For, for churches, it's, it's lovely, isn't it? Like our, our local council has been trying to coordinate stuff, but because they've not done a particularly good job with other refugee groups that have come into the UK, they're like, oh, you know, we're not sure whether we can get involved in this and we're not sure what we can do. And so the church has just jumped in and we, we've done a similar thing to you, just hosted a kind of a, a kind of cafe morning, if you like, where host families can meet other host families and, and you know, engage on those levels. Yeah. It was lovely to see Ukrainians talking in their own native language together. For some, that's been the first time in, in months, you know. Um, and so there's some some lovely little things like that that are coming up with kids who are just able to kind of enjoy themselves, you know, where they haven't had that for months. So um, the church yeah. has got loads and loads of uh, really great resources and great people, isn't it, to be able to coordinate something like this. So Yeah, and we're working with others in the community. Obviously, it hasn't become just a church thing, but we're, two of us from the church are particularly involved in it. Yeah. Um and that's what's and we have done things in the cafe and in other cafes in the village but also in the garden so yeah, yeah. now as we're talking one of the things that keeps coming up is community you you seem you're very passionate about this and um tell us a bit about how you've been able to develop links from the church into the community and i mean i know you're you're on the high street so people can walk past walk in um yeah but you it seems to be more than just that you, rather than just your presence what what kind of things are you doing so our church is not on the high street, it's quite tucked away oh, right. um, of, of the two churches. So the building, is the centre is not next door. Okay. But the centre is right on the high street, very visible. Yeah. Um, it used to have playgroups running in, it doesn't now, but we've got new, much more under fives work, but linked to the church okay. yeah. more recently. Um, but it's a space that's open for people and with the cafe, right, with, very visible on the centre. Yeah, it yeah. Helps people. Um, but what we've done, Pre, prior to COVID and plan to keep doing is reaching out to the community for some of our services. Yeah. So we started, not me, but as a team, yeah. open, uh, meet the nativity. But meet oh, the right. nativity was nativity on the high street. Yeah. People aren't going into church necessarily for nativity, but we're going out to them, okay. um, characters and things. So doing things in the community for the community. Yeah, um, yeah, is a big passion, I think. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So have you got a summer programme or summer events happening to into the community this, this year? We're lucky we have a children's minister and a youth minister. Um, and so they run their own things. Um, the children's minister often has activities going throughout the summer. I don't know yet. The, yeah, yeah. I should know. No, I don't know. Um, the full plan. <laughs> yeah. So that depends on his free time and things. And it, they're much more sporadic. It's We're not, because we're a small village, we're not in the same things a big city church yeah 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 so you're getting on oh, wow that's, that's amazing you've got a children and a youth worker as well that's i mean that's that's unique isn't it for a lot for lots of churches so um yeah yeah i, I i'm being very silly we have got a holiday club <laughs> i had forgotten that for one week it, well, it's, it's three days three days but i'm not involved this year i'm no longer involved in it because i'm busy in the office so i don't think of it in the same way sorry my yeah. fault it's just happening <laughs> yeah no it's good isn't it it's good all these things are great now I've joked on the podcast before that I've always wanted to find somebody who who deals with sort of graveyards and and manages you know those kind of things inside because you know we're you know fairly modern church you know we don't have to do any of that so I don't have to deal with any paperwork or you know we get the odd funeral and, and wedding and stuff like that but um this is a something that's a big part of your job I guess or at least your team we have, two, in it. we have two churches one at each church yeah. one is very compact and or one is quite big but it's very full because it's the yeah. prominent church one has got quite a lot of space still in it but there's quite a lot of difficulty now fitting where to put graves in into the yeah. um, Histon church um, and people who reserve, have reserved plots so it's, it's actually quite difficult yeah um, I think the biggest issue we have is um, what is allowed or not allowed in a churchyard? Yeah. Pots of flowers are not allowed in a churchyard, but people want to put pots of flowers in a churchyard. Yeah. Obviously, keeping it tidy for everybody is important. Yeah. And that's been a big bone of contention with the no mo may. Okay. And yeah. um, of course, we've let it go wild, and it's not looked after. It is looked after, but we're trying to be eco-friendly too. So yeah, yeah. That, that's an interesting challenge. Yeah. <laughs> And so, so people, so this is something you have to deal with, with, with families in the community who've got what, you know, kind of legacy plots or family plots and 
Some of them have, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some so. of them go back years, some of them are new to the village, but it, there are very strict rules as to whether you can be buried there or not, as to what your connection is. A bit like weddings for Church of England, it's very strict on if you fit the right right um, rules and things, so, yeah. 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 So there's a there's a big rule book that helps in this kind of stuff. Is there? Okay, because I I, I yeah. think you know I wouldn't be able, I wouldn't be doing my job very well if I had to manage something like that. I was thinking, oh, I'd be going around in circles and spinning another plate. But um, but you you seem we to be taking in your stride. We have the added joke, added trouble though that Histon and Impington are two villages that have merged into one, right. and the yeah. civic boundaries are different from the ecclesiastical boundaries. So people think they live in one and they don't, they live in the other as far as I'm concerned. So it all <laughs> gets very fun. <laughs> and so tell me about, um, so, so you, you're doing you're doing all the kind of funeral side of things. Tell me about weddings then, because is that a busy part of the role for Church of England Church? We don't have masses at the moment. I think a lot of people have chosen these days not to have church weddings. Okay. They get married at their venues, yeah. not at the church, which is sad. Yeah. Um, We've got some coming up this year. Um, we have got a few, um, but we do a big marriage preparation day for the whole uh, whole deanery. Um, right. So that is a lot of time for the office here. Um, okay. But it's very exciting and very well received by the couples, who I think are a bit daunted as to what they're expected to ha yeah. be doing. But it's a great event for them, and we've had a lot of very positive feedback from it. So, oh, that's good. Uh, tell, tell me a bit about it. So, what does that look like in terms of? Is it a multiple week course or is it a single day it's event? Single day, or... single oh, day yeah. um, in February normally before all the wedding season starts. Yeah, something. Yeah. I think they, previously they have when there've been a lot of weddings they've run more than one a, one a year. But currently we only do one a year, um, and a big nice meal in the lunchtime that we that is cooked for them sort of thing as, as a proper nice dinner. Um, but open discussion times, video times, think thinking about different areas of your marriage, yeah. be that health, be that finances be yeah. that how you sort out arguments be that yeah. and, and funny videos and clips and that's brilliant time for them it's lovely it's really and good so as your your leadership team because just put that together as a package or is that is that a kind of national thing that people are doing or it's not one of the, the there are national ones obviously out there this is not this is our own package that we've done yeah. i love um, that and it's been Taylor. developed for years yeah tailor made for your your village and people that are in your parish which is that's lovely I, I love that because it's one of those areas, isn't it, that you don't, um, you you know, we we tend to organise weddings with people, but we don't tend to help with any pre-marriage or stuff, yeah. which is, which is almost the the vital preparation, isn't it? For yeah, yeah, someone, yeah. you can really set someone up for success, can't you? And thinking, you know, how do you deal with conflict? How do you work through these things when there's a dispute? Yeah, how do you bring finances together and make it all work? They're, they're challenges, aren't they? That people genuinely do face. So. And I think I think one couple did decide, unfortunately, at the end of it, not recently, not in my time, that actually right. it it wasn't right for them. But actually, mm -hmm. how much better to find that out now than to find that out after the wedding? So yeah, yeah. absolutely right. I, I love that. That's, that sounds great. Yes, yeah. so, so, I mean, it's great to be involved in these things. I mean, you, do you like where kind of ministry and administration like sort of overlap and meet together? Um, yeah. I, I yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not an upfront person. I'm not. I'm not a podcast person or a, <laughs> or a sermon person. There's a reason I work in the office. Yeah. I like the admin side, but there's so much pastoral as well. And yeah. the charm of our job is it, there's never a never a, a normal day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always yeah. We always talk about, yeah, it'd be nice to have a normal week, but I'm not entirely sure what that means, really. Yeah. yeah. No, exactly. Are, yeah, we stop and start. Things come in, and yeah, and you and you deal with it, don't you? And um, um, tell me, you've got great people skills. I mean, you 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 love people. You're you're bubbly. You you attract people to you um, and conversations. And obviously, there's a real care about you. You cared for me during the Youth Can Conference. Lovely, and just came and chatted to me. And 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 you're brilliant. At that what what? How could you encourage listeners to to be people focused in their work? Have you got anything that you could top tips from Joe here? <laughs> I would say listen and make sure you are listening. Yeah. But also remember those things. Um, yeah. Often sort of mentioning that back to somebody, it means a lot to them because it may, shows you've paid attention, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, I think that's a big thing. No, yeah, yeah, not judging as well, obviously, is very important. It's just yeah. sort of listening and taking on. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just, that's just me, I think. It's just the way I've been brought up. <laughs> yeah. 
and my personality maybe <laughs> yeah no and, and gifting definitely yeah oh, definitely. I think that that is definitely present there so Joe tell me you've you've your dad was a minister so you've kind of been able to get behind the scenes and see what serves ministers and vicars has that helped you to do your job better yeah I think so because it's given me a greater understanding of the pressures on a minister or vicar in my in this case yeah. now and also of their whole family mm. they obviously that they might have one day off a week but only one day yeah. and actually even then they're on call if yeah. there was a real emergency and the likes of what are things that happen so it gives you as having lived in that household and knowing how important it is to protect the, their time but also the juggling of social life and work life how mm. you, got, mm. you want to have friends in the community but it's where you work and you don't want those friends to be work so it's hard yeah, it really is difficult, isn't it? The overlap. I think one of the best bits of advice my uh, sort of senior pastor said to me once is, you know, go and find some um, some friends who are unbelievers, you know, who are totally unimpressed that you work at the church. They don't want to talk about church life. In fact, it's the last thing they want to talk about. Um, and go and enjoy, you know, some some time and friendship together. And um, it's, it's good advice, isn't it, I think? And I think that's great for us as church administrators, but that's hard for a vicar. Yeah who can't do that so we we have an overlap but we have we can separate a bit more maybe but yeah, yeah it's really yeah, hard definitely. And, and i think your point about them being on call and always on crisis you know if, if something does happen they they do get that call and and um it's it's healthy isn't it for us as church administrators to remember um our vicars and our and our leaders in that way because they they do carry a burden that, that sometimes isn't just i've got to get these tasks done but it's a it's a people burden isn't it and how are they doing and you know the time to pray time to be able to have it. it it can look like sometimes they're not doing anything but actually they are isn't it and that perspective is so important for us as we need information from them as we need to work together um patience is key in this role isn't it yeah no definitely and it, it's it, there is so much that vicars do so much that min, that we do in the office people yeah. just don't understand actually the number of calls we're feel, fielding or the number of emails do they so it's I'm sure they think I sit and twiddle my thumbs all day <laughs> and clock <laughs> off and when I'm supposed to. No. <laughs> so you've been doing this for six years and, and you, you clearly love it. You're, you're passionate about it. Um, are you going to stick around for a long time in this role? Is that, is that something that you think, yeah, I've, I love it. I feel a strong calling yeah. and I love it. I love it. And I love the variety, but I love, I love the admin. I love the pastoral. I love, I love lots of it. Yeah. There are times that I, get frustrated by it like I'm sure a lot of people but yeah. that's part of the job isn't it yeah yeah but you wouldn't be in this job if you wanted it for the money because it's not the money so right. you've got to have that's a right. pattern for it haven't you so yeah that's right yeah I've said to my guys yeah you're gonna have to kick you know you're gonna have to kick me out if you want to get rid of me because I'm <laughs> I'm here I, I love it it's just you know it's it's life for me you know to be able to serve our church um and to make a difference behind the scenes to see things function and happen it's it's lovely you know I hear different ministers talking about just different fruit that's had or different conversations that they had and you realize that you kind of follow that thread back and it's like oh they first came on the church barbecue when we were flat out for 12 hours trying to you know make everything happen and make sure it all came off and and you, you kind of follow that strand and go ah that was worthwhile because yeah. so and so has come and their family's come and someone's got saved and 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 suddenly you go this is wonderful like this these little bits of kind of fruit are so encouraging um do you guys as a team um feedback and have that kind of um opportunity to talk about fruit talk about things that are going well review um things that you're involved in what what are you guys like on that we have we have a staff meeting every week where we pray and talk about our, our, our own lives as well as the work Oh, lives um so which is which is wonderful yeah. i think we're not always good at sort of evaluating against criteria and vision and what have you and that's something i learned on the um ilm course that i was doing for uh, yeah. managing church well that actually i want to bring that in more yeah. um with covid then striking and mental capacity for change etc it yeah. hasn't yeah. happened in quite the same way but we do a lot of that but would, i'd like to do more of it yeah, I think it's good, isn't it? Yeah, how we can communicate stories, even, you know, we enjoy them, but how does the church find out about them as well? It's, it's, it's great. So tell me about this ILM course. What yeah. is this? Tell us, fill us in, because listeners might not know about it. I know a little bit through, through UCAN, but give us a little promo on it. 
managing church well. Yeah. Um, I was encouraged to attend, or I was told about it um, at New Vine when we were having a church administrators um, forum yeah. time. Um, and thought that sounds interesting. It's learning um, how to manage a team, um, yeah. how to manage the church, um, and putting up life skills. Um, it's run uh, by somebody who trains people national, internationally, actually managing levels, but not out of church. But she then wanted to do more for her church and for church administrators. Yeah. Um, it was uh, it leads to letters after your name, I think. If you want to put them there, I don't. Um, <laughs> but it was it was really interesting to talk to other people in the same position, but experiences and things and think of how we manage, how we deal with people. So yeah, it, it empowered me. It made me, um, it reaffirmed some of the things I knew already. It taught me some new things and skills, how to handle things better and gave me confidence in myself and what I'm doing, I suppose, a lot yeah. as well. Um, the, the essays were scary for me. Okay. I'm not, a, I, I might have the gift of the gab, but I'm, I'm not very good at, <laughs> Maths is my subject at degree level. Okay. So I, was, I wasn't a writer for essays. <laughs> yeah. um, so academic essays were quite scary. Um, but it, yeah, it was a really good course and thoroughly recommend it. And some of the changes I now want to make sort of come from that. So yeah. or, or ideas are still things we could do to help. Yeah, so important, isn't it? Because we, we get we get kind of thrusted into these roles. So I mean, everyone's got a different story of how they start into church administration. And then you 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 end up feeling so busy that you don't do any sort of professional development in that sense, do you? And and you know I love going to visit other churches because you just learn so much about the way they run, the the way they do things. Um, but to do some sort of you know professional qualification, it just gives you such grounding, doesn't it? And to be able to do that. So um, well, I've I've heard loads of really positive things about about the course. And and Rachel Slough's the the tutor, isn't she? That's right. Yeah. Great. Well, I think it's, it's, it's lovely to talk to you and lovely to get to know you and, and find out a bit more about you and your role there. Um, thanks for coming on the podcast today. I know this is not your kind of, uh, you know, you said yourself, <laughs> I'm not sure I'm a podcaster, but you are here. You are. You're doing it and, and doing it so well. Thank you. <laughs> you're yeah, very kind. You're doing great. And, uh, and do so thank, thank you for joining us. If you if you have uh, listening into the podcast and, and thanks for taking the time. And um, it's lovely to talk to other church administrators and, and hear their story. And have a good rest of the week. I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> and you. Thank you.